for people that that train, um, there's there, there are at least two different mentalities that we can talk about. One is is the um, the student mindset versus the customer mindset. But they have they have different types of focuses. So a person who is a client or a customer, it's transactional. Okay. And a person who's a student, it's educational. You're trying to develop your as a the student's attitude is you're trying to develop yourself so that you can become something. Okay. In the customer or client mindset, you're buying something. You're getting something for your money. Free Sensei hated the the customer mentality. What is the customer mentality? That it's the it's about business. Business. So, so in Japanese they say akinai konjo, which means what? The businessman's mindset, where the businessman will not bend over and show any respect unless there's money on the ground to be picked up. How does that get in the way of training? Well, it gets in the way because they're always thinking, "What did I get for my money?" Okay. And and largely in 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 traditional based training, what you get is not readily apparent for maybe six years. Or longer. Or longer. So, right? so if you think about it from this mindset that you have a shift in consciousness every six years, right? And so when you're developing this momentum, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, it all starts to build up. Right. And then you have a breakthrough, which comes somewhere between four to six years, and you have a shift in consciousness. And that's how you go, oh, no, I know Aikido now. But what ends up happening is that when you go to a trans transactional, you think, I paid for X and I got Y. I paid for this. I didn't get the thing I wanted. So then you don't. You're trying to always. You're always trying to think about value. So like, <clears throat> I had this personal training client a long time ago that okay. over a year he spent all this money with me. He ended up losing thirty pounds. He got in the greatest shape of his life. Totally turned his life around. Okay. And so I at at the end of the first year. I said, you know, I calculated how much you spent with me in this one year. Do you know how much it was? And he said, no. I said it was ten thousand dollars. Wow. So he spent. This guy spent over ten thousand dollars. That's just on the hourly personal training. And I said, knowing what you know now, if I came to you and said it would have cost you ten grand, would you have done it? He said, no, I wouldn't have done it hmm. because he had, he would he said the sticker shock from ten grand. Mm -hmm. the, there's no way I'm going to do that. Even though he achieved the, a really high goal. Right. So that 10 grand. Would have been too high a price. Yeah, too high of a price to pay. So see, you're getting something for your, your efforts. And so when you do martial arts, especially Aikido, what you get is not readily apparent. And so later on, all of a sudden you go, oh, my foot now moves like that. You can't see the incremental change in yourself. And then you think, oh, I'm not getting any better. And then you quit. Not and realizing then, that you did. Often, the first person thing the person will say is, "How long till I get my black belt?" So yeah. that that's like a transactional question. Yeah. Um, that I think is very transactional. Like they want to know how much time to achieve a specific goal. And then their mind, their calculating mind, calculates how much it's going to cost. Right. So let's say it's five years of training. Yeah. X amount of dollars per month. It's gonna, oh, oh man, it's going to cost me this much money? Yeah, it was like, okay, now it's $15,000 to get yeah. my black belt. And then the sensei just said that Shodan, first degree black belt, means the beginner. Right. So you mean I'm only paying all this money to become the beginner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are. And then they go, forget that. Furu Sensei does that whole old Zen. He used to do that whole Zen thing where you call up and they go, hi, I, I'm interested in, in doing Aikido. Okay, great. Classes are this time. Well, can I ask you a question? Sure. How long does it take to become a black belt? He would say five years. And they said, what if I trained every day? Ten years. He would say, ten years. Ten years. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't understand. What if I trained every day? He'd say 20 years. Right. Yeah. Because he didn't want you to focus on the goal, the goal of attainment because life is a journey. It's about, it's the toil. It, day in and day out, you're going to have to recommit yourself without this carrot uh, leading you the way. See, that seems to me one of the most interesting things about the the, the transactional versus the non-transactional is um, focusing on the everyday experience of training. So if you think about it from this point of view, when people go, I want to do Aikido, and they Google Aikido and they look at the videos, they only see themselves as the nage. They Not don't the see uke. themselves as the uke. <laughs> and then you go, okay, now you got. I'm going to throw you down. What? <laughs> And then you ding your head, you're like, shoot, that's not for me. Right. You know? And so 
you're learning a set of skills that it's a skill set that you're learning. You're not gaining a set of skills when you with from your purchase. It's it, the Aikido martial arts is about the toil. It's about the journey that you, the journey of self discovery and self improvement. So how do you put a dollar amount on that? Yeah, it's very hard. So, or or what? They're clean up. We we have to clean the mats after class. <laughs> don't I pay you to do so? Can't you just pay for someone to do that? You know, but that's that transition transactional mindset. When you go to the yoga studio, you don't clean up afterwards. Right. You barely put the blocks away. People don't want to do that because you have the customer's mindset, which is I got something for my money. I'm not getting my monies out of this. But the thing is about that type of mindset is all students begin transactionally. All students. All students. Yeah. And it's from there that they grow to enjoy the process and then they become real students. Right. So in the beginning, you're how much is it? Mm, can I afford that? Well, I pick the dojo, which is closest to my house and has the schedule that's in line with my Most schedule. Ah, uh, yeah. But then you grow to love it or like it. And then you become a student because you become a student of the game. What are sort of the sort of the key um, attributes of the student mindset when when people start to make that transition and uh, and the teachers help people make that transition? What are the things that? Um, are the, the the strong attributes of the student mindset from your perspective as a chief instructor? The, the strongest attribute is selflessness. Selflessness. Right. And so those are the things you start to look for. Oh, that person um, didn't push their way to the front so they could clean and get out of here. That person let someone else dress in the dressing room when it was First. crowded. Yeah. And then you go, oh, that person is becoming um, more selfless. Or as opposed to, you, it's not necessarily true. But it seems like it's true that the customer's mindset is a selfish person's mindset. I pay, I get. get. And you know what I was saying before about how student it used to be. It begins transactionally, and then it moves to be more um, student based. We have to realize that most people don't understand traditional training. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the Japanese culture. They don't understand traditional training. They don't. Where should I bow here? Not am I bowing to a, a god? Am I you know all those things? And they don't know. So instead of smiting them, we you need to teach them. Right. Hey, the reason why you bow here is to create this mindfulness. The reason why you bow to Osensei is not because you were bowing to this person make it, to deify them. We're bowing to them as, a, as respect. a form of respect and gratefulness that this person created this thing which we use as a vehicle towards our own self-improvement. When you're trying to be a good student, it's really hard to be a good customer at the same time. You have to be one or the other. But if you're thinking, what am I going to get out of this? It's over. Well, that's the thing is about this, the acquisition of l learning lessons, right? Right. Well, you're not, you're not an individual in the dojo anymore. You are part of a dojo. You yeah. are a member. You, you train with these other people. You're responsible for your safety. You're responsible for their safety. You're responsible for the, the, the proper care of the dojo. You're, you're, you're a, a member. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that, and that's where the tr you can't transactionalize it. So in order to give up your life for another person, to save another person, you cannot go transaction, calculate. Yeah, it about makes sense because there, it, it doesn't right. make sense. You jump into the void and take control of the situation. Right. So you can't be on the battlefield and be calculating your mind because if you're calculating, then you're going to make a mistake. Right. You have to move on instinct. And so when you're fighting all these people, I can't be thinking, oh, well, I don't really like Mike, so I'm going to calculate my way away from him so that he gets killed because he's my rival in the dojo. Right. That doesn't work. You, you don't fight like that. So this idea that you're going to have to move away from, from calculating, right? that akinai konjo, that you, you're going to only show respect when it's time to show respect, only do these things when it's your benefit. And then, but in the beginning, you're like that. Oh, I'm only, hi, sensei. Oh, uh, yes, that was a great class today as right. you suck up. But then later on, you're, you're, you're doing it not from that standpoint. So right. all etiquette and mindsets are fake in the beginning. But that's that thing, right? Like it, it, it is all fake in the beginning because unless you're from, you know, 16th century Japan. You don't know. You don't know. And then you're like, hi, sensei. Doing all this stuff. You don't, you're not from the culture. You don't understand the culture. Yeah, I don't even understand it. Yeah. You're trying to mimic it from, you know, senior students trying to figure it out as you go. 
But then, you know, this is the thing in which you use as a tool to make yourself into a better person. Yeah, but it, I, I, like you said, it takes time. It takes time to get. Uh, if it was a number line to go from like zero to twenty, it, to go from zero to two takes a long time, and go from z from two to twenty takes a really long time. So, like you, that's why you, it's about cultivating this mindset that from the beginning it starts off as a customer. I paid my dues. I get this, but then the more you get, you start to realize no, it's more than that, and actually. I'm getting the deal. See, before you're like, oh, is this a good deal for me? And it seems like they're getting a, the better deal. Right. But then after you give them the money and you start doing it, you realize, oh my God, that's I would pay 10 times this right, amount. what it is. And that's what we started talking about like, this idea. If, it, if you knew you were going to get in the greatest shape of your life by the end of the year, would you pay 10 grand? You'd pay more. You'd, you know, right now you go, no. But then <laughs> once you get it, you're supposed to go, yeah, I'd pay 10 times that to get to that level. Right. You know, that I would get to this place in my life where I feel more grounded, more, I have more inner peace or whatever it is you're searching for, right? But that's that thing that today you're hoping that the person who sees things as a customer or transactionally doesn't see them like people see it as the modern person. My, my first teacher said to me, and, and I remember the story because you and I have talked about this, is my first teacher said to me, the, the most important thing to have is the best teacher that you can get in your martial arts. Like the teacher is the most important yeah. thing in martial arts. Doesn't matter where they are. If you have to drive two hours and you can only go to two classes rather than the closest teacher in four classes, drive and only go to two classes. And that's the old school mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it's better to quit and do a different style because right, the teacher exactly. is better than choose an inferior teacher. That's Easy. That that does your style, the schedule works for you, or whatever it is. That the, the teacher, the quality of teacher is the most important. Thing. Right. So then, and that's very traditional. Yeah. And so when you look at it from that standpoint, as the, st the student's mindset or the consumer's mindset, which totally one, different. Yeah. That's the student's mindset. That's a student mindset. Convenience. That that the the birds of a feather flock together. One bad apple spoils a bunch. That. If you're standing close to someone of caliber, you will become a person of caliber. Right. You know, they say, if you want to know someone's true character, look at their friends. Right. Right. Because again, birds of a feather flock together. So standing next to a high quality teacher will only benefit you in the long run, as, right. opposed, to, as opposed to standing next to the pe person who is a little bit cheaper and the schedule works for you. Right. That idea, like you said, it's not even just in, in, your, in your style. It's like it could be you might have to switch. I know people that switch they switch genres and in styles yeah. in martial arts and nationalities because that was a better, there was a better teacher was close by. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, not, not a good teacher wasn't close by, yeah. but that's the hard part. Who has the, the gumption to do that? Yeah. Because remember martial arts is just, you know, hi ya kicking him in the face, punching him in the stomach. It's all the same. Yeah. It comes down to the training and how, and that's why the old school teacher was, it was only about how strict the teacher was. Yeah. Because if you look at it from the how strict the teacher was, then it's the student's mindset as opposed to give me, I give you this, you give me that. Right. Right. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't, it never adds up in traditional training. This idea of strictness, can you elaborate on that? But it's, it's, it's co-equal with this idea of traditional, mm -hmm. best teacher, close to the uh, lineage. Like these are all things that float in the same group. Of yeah. ideas, how well, does it? How do, in your mind, how does the strictness play within that 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 group of ideas that make the, the training beneficial for the student? So, if you think about this idea of consumer versus student, the customer wants the teacher to be nice and give them what they want. The student wants the teacher to be good and tell you the things that you don't want to hear, <laughs> right? So, a strict teacher, they say, the best teacher is the one that's the most unreasonable. Right. It's unreasonable because they're not going to teach you the way you want to be taught. They're not going to teach you the things that you think should be taught. You come to me. I am the expert. Let me do my work. If I say this, trust me, this is the technique that is, is going to work for you. Well, I saw this thing on YouTube. Well, whatever. Go to YouTube and learn Aikido. Right. Well, uh, you can't learn YouTube on Aikido. You can't learn Aikido on YouTube. Well, then let me teach the class. Right. But that strictness is that there's going to be things you're going to want to get away with. 
there's going to be things that you don't want to do. And the teacher and has like, to have no. that strictness to say, I'm sorry, Bill, you have to do that thing. Yeah. You have to eat your vegetables first. But yeah, like the, but that's that hard part. The teacher has to have the strictness right. to tell you the things that you don't want to hear and make you do the things you don't want to do. It's the strictness of the teacher which forces you to do the things that you don't want to do, which enable you to get good. Yeah. If I told you as your, your college professor, you don't need to read any books, <laughs> what's the likelihood you're going to get a good grade on the final? Zero. Very low, right? Every once in a while, you have this person that just gets really good grade because they're super smart or good at taking standardized tests. But most of us would fail. Yeah. So someone has to be there to say, you need to read this book. You need to attend these lectures. But uh, a consumer, a customer-based teacher, a business teacher would just say, oh, no, 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 whatever you want to do, Bill. But then they're going to hurt you because you're... When the time comes for you to use this Aikido on the street or in, in an opportunity to save your spouse's life, you're going to go on all week. Yeah. And then when you go on all week, it's not going to work. And you can't go. It's always easier to dial it back than it is to dial it up. Yeah. But if you want it faster, fun, and crazier, it usually doesn't work. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, fancy techniques almost always fail. Quintessentially, think about uh, this whole training of Mr. Miyagi and Daniel-san. Daniel-san's painting the fence, painting the wall, wax on, wax off. And then only when Mr. Miyagi brings it all together does Daniel-san realize, oh my gosh. Right. Yeah, this guy's are. taking advantage of me, make me paint his fences and wash his cars. He said, I'm being your damn errand boy. <laughs> right? And then Mr. Miyagi's like, ah! And then Daniel's blocking you. Oh my God, I got all this thing. But that's the hard part. A student has to stay long enough to go, Sensei, I didn't learn nothing. And then I slap him and then he blocks it. And he goes, oh! I learned it. Yeah. You know, like there's this really great scene in um, Killing Machine with Sonny Chiba where he has a one armed student. And then the one armed student is feeling bad about himself. He's getting drunk. And then Sonny Chiba goes over there and he's supposed to be a Master So, the founder of Shorinji Kempo. And so the guy's getting all drunk and Everyone's like trying to calm the guy down because he's all upset. And Sonny Chiba comes in and then tells everybody, don't worry, I got this. Grabs the guy, just slaps him across the face as hard as he can. And the guy's got one arm. Throws him down, body slams him, throws him, kicks him, hits him, and just start beating this one arm dude up in the rain. And everybody's just like, what are you doing? And then there's this one point where Sonny Chiba goes to hit him and the guy blocks and counter punches with the one hand. And then Sonny Chiba just like jumps back in the Kamae and then his blood coming out of his mouth. And he's like, see, you can still do it. And then the guy, the, the student's like oh, looking at his own fist, oh, 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 master, oh, and starts crying. We don't usually get that opportunity right. with, our stu with the student where they finally see it all come full circle. Right. And they go, oh my gosh. It's right. only years and years and years later when um, you're chased down the street by four thugs and you defend yourself and you go, oh, I did learn something. Oh, well, I tell my I told my teacher to F off and I burnt the school down. Well, but I mean, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like there's no there's nothing more expensive than regret. Yeah. So that's the hard part. When you if you think of things as a transactionally, like a consumer or a customer, then you're always going to be calculating um, what you got out of it, what's your deal. But as a student, you can't calculate it because it can't see it. But only later do you realize that you're not the person that you were when you first started. Yeah, for sure.